Well, a couple of very familiar faces in the uh, Furman uh, Paladins football program visiting practice today. Uh, as you look at the video screen on your right, Bobby Johnson, Dick Sheridan on your left, uh, making, I guess, what's become an annual visit to check in and see how Clay Hendricks is doing, right, guys? Bobby? Oh, yeah. We uh, love to go watch him practice, and uh, we don't have to worry about him. We just uh, enjoy it. And uh, we really enjoyed it today because we saw some really outstanding players out there today. And so you're so you're not here, Dick, keeping tabs on Clay, right? Oh no, we know him well enough to know he's <laughs> that he's going to do a great job, and he's a detailed guy. And we've been here uh, every year, and every year they've gotten better, and this is no exception. They look good, uh, the players look better, and uh, they, their system uh, has been installed both sides of the ball, and. They know what they're doing and they're getting after it. We were kind of talking about that prior to starting the, the interview uh, and just asked both of you to kind of talk about this, but from the first year that you saw them to, to this year, what has changed from uh, everything from physically to, to what you're seeing about how they're running play system? Well, you're looking at me, so I should... I'm, well, I guess either one of you, go ahead, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Bobby and I have talked about it. It's just seeing, seeing them physically. Uh, they they look more lean. They look in better shape, and uh, they 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 look they look different than what they looked three years ago, and uh, it's all good. Also, the effort. I mean, you know, we noticed today that uh, everybody wanted to do what they were supposed to do, do it the best they can, and when you get them doing that, and they take charge, you know, it really helps you out as a coach. So. You know, we, we really like the way they, they work today. And, and you guys know something about demanding effort from your players, right? Yeah, and if you don't have to demand it, those guys know that uh, what we want, and you don't have to be behind them on every play. Every once in a while you need a, you know, you need a punch or two or something like that to get them going, but they, were, they had a great uh, accent on what they wanted to do today. Dick, from your time coaching here, uh, and, and Bobby, you can come in on this as well because both of you had tremendous success here uh, in, in, in your tenures. Um, we hear a lot of times that not only have times changed, but players have changed and the way coaches have to deal with players have changed. So what, what do you see out on in that field? Have, have today's players, are they that much different than what they were? I'll start with you, Dick, when you were the coach here. Well, it is different, um, but some things don't change. Uh, as Bobby was mentioned, the effort uh, still has to be there back when we were coaching and now. You know, they, you know there's no shortcuts to success, and you've got to put, pay the price of going hard, and, and uh, Clay and his staff have them doing that. And so the thing that's changed the most for me is the players are taller and they're bigger. And, um, you know, we had a lot of players that were considered an inch or two short uh, for, to play in their programs, but they were just as good or better players. People ask me um, all the time how, how about the success in beating the what we call 1A teams then, four in a row, and I said, we have better players. They weren't as tall, and they weren't as, you know, just looking out on the hoof, they weren't as impressive, but they were better players technique-wise and effort-wise. And, and Bobby, your your career coaching career ended a little more recently, so you kind of bridged the gap, say, between that generation of players that maybe he's talking about and and closer to this generation. What what do you see as far as similarities and differences? Well, I think you know you go back to your re recruiting uh, to to answer that question, and because we were at Furman and we you know had to have guys who really want to get an education, same as I did at Vanderbilt. And when you have those kind of guys, they're, they're, they're ready to go. You, know, they, you don't have to prod them to get up there to go to practice, um, to go to school or anything like that. Uh, those are the kind that we had really a bunch of success with over the, pa over the past years. You guys were talking when we came in and sat down and were preparing for this interview that you had been kind of talking with each other about the number of hours you had spent 
on those practice fields out there. Did you come up with any kind of number? I mean, you guys put in a lot of time out on those fields. Five million. <laughs> <laughs> At least, maybe ten. <laughs> but uh, it was well spent, and uh, just like we enjoyed ourselves today, we enjoyed looking back now the time we spent in because of the results that it produced. A lot easier watching somebody <laughs> else do the work, though, right? <laughs> Or, well, or is it? Well, we well, didn't. <laughs> it wasn't. Uh, we we were really, you know, excited about you know how how they were being coached and how they were being, uh, you know, put out in situations that the coaches want them to be in there and and be successful doing that. You know, they they were coached today. You both obviously have a long history with with Clay Hendricks. Was there anything about him years ago that that led you to believe that he would be a successful head coach, Dick? Um, yeah, I, the answer to that is yes, because he was, uh, you know, in the offensive line, they don't get a, a lot of attention sometimes, but they have to know a lot. And um, I, was, I was reminding Clay of when we were here for the offensive line, we had what we call, we'd call Rambo in the huddle. And that was five different plays between the tackles, so we go ram it out of them. In five different blocking schemes against all the defenses we prepared for, and they had to instantly know what play the quarterback called based on the defensive front. So you can't be a dummy and play in the offensive line. And like Bobby said, all of our players, just to be able to get in school here and the graduation rate that we both had, we're very proud of. But Clay uh, Menley, you know, was one of the brightest players we had. And attention to detail uh, is a reflection of of that and we see that in the planning we see it on the field and so we both have great confidence what he's doing here and then bobby you had clay as an assistant coach right? sure did and uh was there at all times great job of, with the offensive line like coach says the toughest position on the football team and uh you know i didn't have to worry about it you know i just turned it over those offensive linemen to to that and I was probably working a little bit more on the uh, defensive side. When people talk about the academic challenge at Furman University, people outside of here oftentimes roll their eyes because they hear that about many schools. You two know exactly how difficult it is to get great students who are also great athletes on this campus to recruit well and to bring in the kind of talent that allows you to play the championship level, which you both did. What, what, what is it about what Clay is doing right now that's making him successful in that? Is it because he played here, because he coached here, or is it more than that? Well, as, as Bobby mentioned, uh, in recruiting, you know, you have to eliminate a lot of people you'd like to, to recruit because of their SAT score, the AC. Uh, T score their class rank, but you know, in my opinion, that made us better. It was considered by some people liability because we only had 55 scholarships, the highest academic standards in the conference, and the smallest budget. But we turned that into uh, assets because of the kind of people that Clay is recruiting, the kind of people that Bobby recruited and I recruited. Uh, they had to meet those academic standards, and that turned out to be an asset. So. We don't worry about that, and Clay doesn't either. He, he goes after the, the uh, best players who have the academic standards to succeed at Furman. Smart academically usually translate to a smart football player? Sure, I think it does. And, you know, these guys want to be at Furman. And, you know, they know the, what kind of education they're going to get and what opportunities come after. They they finished with football. They know they're gonna they're gonna do well in in life. So it's you know everybody asks me, you know, isn't it tough? Isn't it tough to recruit at Furman or Vanderbilt? And I said, no, it's not. It's not. They want to come here. You just go make sure you got guys that you want and sign them up, and they'll be ready to go. And I guess Dick, it's it's viewing something as an opportunity rather than a challenge. Well, it's, it's uh, both for the players, I believe. And the, um, 
you know, when we recruited, uh, our coaches, I, t I told our coaches, go first to the academic counselor's office, check their transcript and see if we were wasting our time or not. If they didn't, we didn't see what we wanted to see, leave and go to the next school. And uh, we found that we, did, we couldn't waste time if they couldn't graduate here, not just be here, but graduate here, then we were wasting their time. So uh, Bobby did the same thing here and at Vanderbilt. And uh, I did the same thing here at NC State. That, uh, you know, we wanted, got used to coaching players that were bright, that had those, uh, those attributes that they would work hard and that you didn't have to, as Bob said, keep pushing them. We wanted guys that would push themselves. And that you, coaching is a lot easier with those kind of players. When, when you guys were recruiting, uh, and, and I'd say you probably, Bobby, had more of this than, than Dick, and you can tell me if I'm right or wrong, but how, how much uh, was uh, the, the level of the facilities a part of the conversation, uh, a part of the uh, competition with the other schools? Well, yeah, all coaches talk about that those kind of things, and most time they were used against us, but still, we're in the, probably the prettiest uh, school in South Carolina or, or to the East Coast, and uh, it's, it's a wonderful school, and if those guys can't figure it out that you're going to be in a great school, but you're going to also be playing against some of the best football teams in your conference, or in, sometimes out of your conference. It's, it's just, um, you know, just got to have to be enlightened about what it means to be here at Furman. Dick? Well, facilities are, are important, and it's more important now than when we were at Coach. We were laughing that uh, our weight room was about the size of this, this room here. <laughs> we had a universal machine in there, and uh, I've been in several high schools where the weight rooms are much, much better than anything we had here. And uh, I had a, someone tell me, a, a coach that's coaching now says that, I thought the way he put it was good. He said that these kids today, they make up their mind where to go with their eyes. What do you think when you come back here after all these years? Is it still the same special place that it was when you were here? Well, Bobby and I were just looking at the, uh, at the field and the stadium. And when we were both here, uh, we played in Serene Stadium. I don't know if you oh, yeah. remember that. but. Uh, until we won that first championship in 1978, we couldn't get the ball rolling to do what's out there, to get a stadium on campus. So it was really important to win that first championship and, uh, and, and more of them uh, to, to get this done. To get the ball rolling, we had to win that first one. And this stadium, you know, means a lot to both of us because it wouldn't be here without the time we spent together uh, working hard with a bunch of great players to make sure the circumstances that we have here now uh, came about. It, was, it wasn't easy. Something about appreciating what you have, isn't it, Coach? Uh, it, it sure is. I, I really loved to be here and when I was here, and uh, it was, uh, you know, just happy every day, you know, when I was getting there. And they said, everybody said, well, why'd you leave? Well, you know, sometimes you have to test your own self and, and see what you can do and, and go on. But uh, my heart has been at Furman for a long, long time. And it's more than just football. It's all kind of the people in the, in the school. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, a great place to be uh, in somewhere where you're, you're helping somebody get an education. Well, I know you both have uh, different schools and, and some different colors on your resume, but I got to tell you, you, you look best in that Furman purple with that diamond <laughs> F on your chest. Well, Clay Hendricks uh, doesn't have two greater supporters uh, and, than Bobby Johnson and myself. We, we, uh, we want to help in every way we can. We feel limited in what we can do, but uh, our hearts are purple.